This is Pat. Hi, how are you, Pastor? Are you well? Oh, good. Good. Yes, I'm doing well. Awesome, awesome. Well, well a pleasure to, to get a chance to talk to you again. Um, you know, the, the, the purpose for us actually coming together this evening is to uh, really discuss your testimony. I, I was extremely blessed when I spoke to uh, Evangelist Jacob uh, Toback, and he was telling me a little bit about your testimony, and I had a chance to, to talk to you a little bit myself. And uh, we thought that it would be a good idea to give uh, the, the other believers an opportunity to hear your story as well. Uh, many people may know that uh, evangelist and apostolic worship leader Jacob Toback is he, he really teaches on worship and, and true throne room worship, as he has for many years. Uh, a part of what uh, evangelist Jacob also does during uh, these, these conferences is he really addressed the fact that many believers are struggling uh, with unforgiveness and, and bitterness and things of that nature. And so, you know, b before he, he teaches people how to go into the Holy of Holies, he actually has a, a, a period where he, he gives people the opportunity to come forward and receive deliverance for unforgiveness and bitterness. And um, he, he had met you, uh, and, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to kind of jump right in to, 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 to catch people up, but he met you uh, a few uh, uh, years ago, and, and you yourself were actually uh, dealing with and struggling with bitterness and unforgiveness with, with your mom. And, yeah. um, and, and, and again, from talking to you, we understand that through that service, uh, that you were delivered from something that really had been uh, something you had been struggling with for decades, really. And yes. so, yes. Yeah, right. And so with that said, um, I, I want to give you an opportunity to talk to the other believers because as, as some may or may not know, we do have a worship gathering uh, that, that we will be doing in the, uh, the city of, uh, of, of Hillside, Illinois. Uh, coming up February 6th through the 8th, and then following that, we'll also have a worship gathering in Virginia. And so we want to give those that uh, are considering possibly coming out to the worship gathering just a little bit more information about what goes on in some of these type of services, and in particular when it comes to um, uh, deliverance from forgiveness and bitterness and, uh, and things of that nature. So let me give you an opportunity to, to really kind of just jump right in. Where, where, when did you first notice that you had, uh, though you had been struggling with bitterness and, and, and unforgiveness? Well, I, I, I knew I had it. Well, prior to prior to dealing with my mom and the situation, I knew I kind of had it with my struggles through life. I mean, with with my struggles with my siblings, my mom, uh, growing up as a teen, I knew I had anger and rebellion. I didn't know what it was at that time. I just thought I was, I just didn't like my family, actually. Mm. So what happened was uh, I have a twin. We, we rarely got along, you know, growing up. We, she didn't like to dress alike. It didn't, I didn't have a problem with it or anything, but we weren't close and, you know, things like that. I mean, although I could uh, feel things that's wrong with her, but I can feel something. Of course, when I wasn't saved, I didn't know what it was. Then going mm -hmm. through a divorce, going through a bitter marriage, a bitter divorce, and things like that, I knew it was some things. Uh, prior to that, I mean, before that, it was like I, I just thought something was just wrong with me. My mom lied to me about my dad living. My dad died, and my grandmother told me my dad was alive, and then my mom sent us to this man who said he's our father. It, it was just a whole lot of things. So after all that, mm -hmm. I just grew angrier and hateful, Just and I just knew it was there. And I'm like, oh, I just don't like people. So right. uh, eventually when um, my mom, not having uh, a husband, and she uh, had nine children, we were always with our siblings. She was always gone, stuff like that, so abandonment issues and things like that, which I just thought of. And mm -hmm. then um, my mom had, uh, you know, X amount of men here and there. And so one of her male friends, she said she wasn't dating him or anything, but he just had a store. She had met him, and he wanted us girls to work at his store. And, um, you know, she sent me with him. I, I didn't want to go. I always told her I didn't like him. He would buy us clothes, and I don't want that. I don't like him. I don't want to put on that. Give it to somebody else. 
but she made me wear it and she made me go with him and he molested me and um that too brought more anger with my mother and I practically ha- I, I hated her actually I told her because that day he came back the next day he thought I wasn't going to tell her she chased him with a knife and then when she came back I asked her she killed him and she said well I was about 11 12 or 11 or something like that as I can remember I was small and uh, I, I told her I hated her and after that it was serial D rebellion I did nothing she told me to do. If I wanted to stay over my girlfriend's house, I would stay over my girlfriend's house. But I was in rebellion, and I knew, you know, something was wrong. So all of that, I got married and this and that, marriage, divorce, and all this and all that bitterness as well. And um, my mom said, well, you're married now. You don't need me. I don't have to visit you and stuff like that. So all this stuff is just building up and up. I've been to other places, other ministries where I've been. I've gotten some deliverance, but it didn't hit that core that was there. And, right. I, and I still struggle. Basically, the, still the root. And so, yeah, and so you, root, you, yeah. had, you, you had mentioned that uh, you, you were saved. And uh, you, then there was a period of time where uh, your mom got sick and you became your yeah. mom's caretaker. And yes. it, it, it was then that you really began to notice really that, began. that yes. there really is a lot of bitterness here. There really yes. is a lot of anger. There's a, there's a lot of unforgiveness. Yes. There, there's a lot going on here. And, um, you know, I think one of the things that was so interesting when you and I actually spoke initially was the fact that uh, you had gone to God and, and you knew oh, yes. God's word. And God's word tells us all that, you know, if, if we don't forgive, that the Father yeah. can't forgive us and can't forgive yeah. us. And so, you know, I, I'm sure you, like most believers, you made every effort to forgive, but the reality is is that it was just kind of hard to release oh, yeah. some of those things that you have been dealing with for so long, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Right. So, yes, so, definitely. So let, let's let's fast forward now here uh, a, a couple of years uh-huh, later. Uh-huh, uh-huh. A couple of years okay. later, you're dealing with the, the the bitterness. You're dealing with the forgiveness, and yeah. um, you had heard from a friend about a conference coming with uh, Evangelist Jacob Toback. You knew it was a worship gathering, and uh, yeah. you decided that you know I, I think I want to press out. I think I want to come. Let, let's talk about yeah. that because I know you had mentioned actually, that. Actually, I, I kind of in your mind. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Yes, I made up in my mind. I prayed and I asked God because while I was struggling, I was praying. I asked God. I said, "I gotta have some release, God. I I, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go somewhere. You gotta help me. I I I feel like I'm not saved, and you know, just just I just didn't feel like I was even serving Him. I felt like I was religious and just saying right. things and didn't mean it, and I didn't know how to come out of the. And I wanted to, wow, and it just powerful. wasn't happening. It, yeah, it just powerful. wasn't happening. And, so and it, what you know, I did okay. was, uh-huh. No, well, I didn't mean to go, but that was so powerful what you just said, that you felt yeah. that that bitterness and unforgiveness prevented you from really entering into an intimate yes. relationship with God. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Because it just felt like I was just saying something that didn't mean it, and then I go back and can't love her because of right. how I feel that she was couldn't, you know, give me what I needed and had never done it. And, and and I cried out and I said, she's my mother. How could she not love me? And I was just struggling back and forth, right. just back and forth, but still taking care of her, but with resentment, you right. know, and, and, and then my twin, you know, telling her about I'm stealing money and I'm the one who's cleaning her and, you know, giving her a bath and she couldn't move, she couldn't get out the bed and I'm hurting my back. And I was just, oh, I, I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown, but. Right. I, I just kept going back to God, and I said, I need something. I, I, I'm just being suffocated. And so Carol Connor, when she called me and told me, she said, it's a conference coming. I don't know if you've heard of Jacob. I said, I, I don't think, I, I don't, I've never heard of him. I said, okay, mm-hmm. what's going on here? And she just said, well, it's a conference. He does worship. And I said, okay, Lord, is this something I need? Maybe I'm not doing worship right. Or I just didn't, it didn't matter what was going on. I didn't know. Right. I never heard of him. I didn't know. I said, okay, Lord, if if, if this is something I can go to, I, it, it would nothing would prevent me from not going. So as soon as I asked somebody if they would come and care for my mom, they they came. 
I mean, everything right. fell in place, so I I felt that God was leading me to go. So that was that was your sign. <laughs> yes, that was a sign for me because you, usually yeah. if if I'm not allowed to go anywhere, which I know, uh, prior to me not having my mom, nothing goes through. And I said, okay, Lord, you you giving me a sign. This is not something I should do, and I won't do it. And it don't even bother me if I don't do it. But then this came through, everything came through. The person was here. She had she was okay, and I went. And um, it, it, it was awesome. It was it was awesome that first night. It you know I got some some relief you know, so I can sit up and and listen and and not being bombarded with a lot of things going on in my mind. How she was? Right. Oh, uh, she probably don't care if I'm not there anyway. Whatever you right. know stuff like that. I just had a lot of neg- negativity. Right. And so I got some deliverance that night. And so the second night, uh, I knew it was still something. It is it's, it's just still something. I just couldn't put my finger on it, you know, and um, the, the, the second night, uh, uh, Jacob called up people who, you know, who, who wanted to come and get free, and he said resentment, bitterness, but when he said that that um, uh, rape or molestation and stuff like that, boy, just bam, you know, I'm like, that, that, and that I just stood before. up and came up there, yeah, Amen. and I came Amen. up there, and as he was talking, he just kept saying, you know, now you all don't have to be ashamed to come up here. It's, it's, you know, you all have low self-esteem from things that has happened to you, especially when rape. And he kept repeating that. And boy, when that thing hit me again, I hit the floor. Wow. He wasn't even wow. praying. He was just talking, just talking. And I hit the floor on my knees, and and I just started choking, and you know, just just, just start screaming. I was. It was like a cry inside of me. I couldn't explain it. It was like something inside of me was screaming. And right. this sounded like the girl who was who was, who was being hurt. And wow. it was just so tremendous. I just, wow. I just, wow. I didn't, it was just, wow. It was just tremendous. Wow. And, 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 and you I know, just I, let I, it happen. You, I just let it you happen. Just, you just let it happen. I, I, and I, think I just didn't that, try to stop it. I think one of the things that really stuck out to me when you and I initially talked, you said that you had, prior even coming to the conference, and you really didn't know that Minister Jacob was going to be ministering on Bitter no, 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 no. but no, you no. you had prepared in your heart prior to coming oh, yeah. that I you did. really wanted for God to do yeah. something for you supernaturally. And, yes, and, and I, I did my I, fasting I, as well. You did your fasting, which, of course, yeah, Mr. Jacob, he, he always instructs everyone, of course, to fast three days prior yeah. to the gathering. And so you're right. Yes. And so, so uh, you know, it, this is absolutely incredible because I, I think I think what, what Minister Jacob has really experienced, we we were just at the uh, conference in, in Texas uh, for New Year's, New Year's Eve. And mm-hmm. uh, God led on him also to uh, to address and, and open the door for individuals to be delivered from uh, bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. And uh, mm-hmm. over over seventy percent of the congregation oh, wow. came forward to be delivered from bitterness, unforgiveness, and anger. Isn't oh, that amazing? My God. Oh, 70%. wow! Seventy percent. And, and and so what that tells me is that this is something that is very heavy on, on the Lord's heart. He, he wants oh, yes. people to be delivered. Yes. He wants people to be set yes. free. And and yes. I think ultimately, just like you eloquently pointed out before, he wants to remove those things so that people can really come into a deeper, more intimate relationship with him. Yes, definitely. Because that's yes. what it's all about. Definitely. And so let me, let me yes. ask you one other, one other thing, because you – you said something I thought was so profound. You said after this service, you went back home and you were begin to take care of your mom. But you yes. noticed that things were absolutely different internally. Yes. Talk yes. about that a little bit. For me, yes. That, that was miraculous to me because even when I would pray prior to that and I would go and take care of her, I still would have that resentment, that, ugh, you know. and But when I went this, when I came back this time and, and started taking care of her, I felt like I, I've always ached for that agape love of God, and that's what he, that's what I've always wanted, and that's mm-hmm. what he was giving me, to see her as he saw her and not from 
what I missed from her, what she couldn't give me, and stuff like right. that. And it's, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is the so way you, I wanted, have wanted to feel a, a long time, not to 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 want something back just because I needed it or you know I because that's not the way God is. He He gives unconditionally, and I wanted that unconditional love for people. And I always say, so, how could I minister to people and don't have that right. unconditional love? I always want something back. And so, so after that service, you you not only develop that unconditional love for her, and as you mentioned to me before, you actually begin to see her as God saw her, which God I thought that, her, that's yes. such, right. And so, yes. I ha, have you also noticed that since being delivered from from that bitterness and forgiveness and anger? that uh, you've been uh, able to serve God more freely, not only with mom, but in every other area of your life? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, even with what I mentioned to you is about this pastor saying that, well, it wasn't apostle's doctrine. I don't even look at him like, okay, are you jealous? I mean, you know, not like with a jealous heart and stuff like that. I just look at him mm-hmm. and say, okay, maybe I'm missing something. I don't mm-hmm. uh, try to put down what people say and because and, I've always kind of judged what people say or you know, they're rejecting me and they're dissing me and this and that. And, and it, it's not like that anymore. It's like, okay, maybe I'm missing something. And I'll just go back to, to the Lord. Right. And, and, so and when the Lord speaks to me. Mm-hmm. In, in other words, what, what I'm hearing from you, I, I guess if uh-huh. we were to try to sum it up, is you're telling uh-huh. me that, that you are free. I feel free. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, 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 and that's what the word says, that he who the Son yes. sets free yes. is free indeed. And indeed. that's why yes. it, it, it's on the yes. heart of God to be delivered from bitterness, angerness, and unforgiveness so that it frees uh-huh. you to really be all that uh-huh. God is calling for in this time. Amen. Amen. And, Amen. And, and, yes. Let yeah, me tell ahead, you please. this. When, uh, I, I do ministry of worship through dance as well. And mm-hmm. I've danced with this this uh, about three other persons, and my uh, leader she she she's a little rough on the edges, you know. And she kept telling me mm-hmm. to do this part and do that part and do that part and this part and and, and she she was beginning to irritate me. And I just and this this was in front of other people, and I'm like, right. okay, so what's going on here, Lord? And um uh, and, and and I dismissed it. I, I I dismissed it. But that was a time when. She, you know, I wouldn't dare let anybody embarrass me in front of people, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so when we went to the back to get dressed or to, to minister, you know, uh, in the congregation, her and one of the other uh, team members went into the room and shut the door in my face and said, there's not even enough room in here, you know, for you. And I'm like, I've never been to this place before, so where am I supposed to go? Mm-hmm. I, I would have walked out and said, to get you all. Mm-hmm. I would have walked out. And would have never had anything to do with them. But I, you know, pushed the door open and I said, okay, so where am I, where am I supposed to go to, so I can get dressed? Mm-hmm. So it, I, I just like, oh, my goodness. And, and, and for you, for you, that, that was a big, because you knew yes. that you had been changed. <laughs> yes. I knew, your, it. I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I said, oh, Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? What? So let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. I guess in closing, as I mentioned, we will be in Hillside, Illinois, uh, February okay. 6th through the 8th. And uh, okay. following that, we'll actually be in uh, Virginia. And, uh, and I asked you yesterday, you know, what, what would you say to, to um, individuals that are considering coming uh, and, and that are actually struggling with bitterness, angerness, and forgiveness. And you gave me an answer. Do you remember what that answer was? I think it was prepare your hearts to do it. Prepare your hearts. That's it. Prepare, I, I, Tom I, prepared. I, 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 I,